our theme, Making Visible the Face of Wisdom. This theme, which takes its impetus from the orientation of the general chapter of 2012, is both an obvious one and a provocative one for our pondering together. For more than 300 years, women have been called by God to do precisely that. We are conscious that we stand on the shoulders of generations of holy women, living in fidelity to this remarkable invitation, make visible the face of wisdom. Just a few weeks ago, at Rita Finnan's burial, we remembered many of our sisters who, like Rita, having fulfilled this commitment, now see the face of wisdom in fullness of life. We who gather here today, and those united with us, our sisters in Connecticut, in Maine, in Nebraska and North Carolina, in Ozone Park, Sound Beach, Maria Regina, and Our Lady of Consolation. We have all been drawn by wisdom, and she has seen fit to bring us to this particular moment in time, this particular moment in the history of religious life. While there are numerous ways of describing religious life as it's being experienced in the United States context, I would like to borrow an image from Sister Nancy Schreck, OSF, giving at the 2014 LCWR National Assembly. Nancy suggests that we are living in the middle space a place of creativity and disorientation. Much of what was is gone, and what is coming is not yet clear. Now certainly those statements are not going to make the headlines of Newsday or the Daily News. Still, I believe it is worth our while to unravel something of the deeper meaning of those statements. Much of what was is gone. So many aspects of institutional living, large DW communities serving in hospitals and schools, regular daily schedules, predictable times of fasting and feasting, numbers of postulants entering every six months, and professions celebrated every February 2nd and August 2nd, obediences that marked frequent changes in community and ministry, and those numerous committees <laughs> each with a good number of members. Externals, yes, gone. And beneath those externals, at the risk of terribly oversimplifying, a sure sense of meaning in our lives, a stable God and the service of others, recognized as such by family and friends and the immediate highly Christian society around us. And except for those who were sent to the missions, a life spent totally within the boundaries of North America in an ever-expanding group of consecrated women. Not to say that all this was wonderful, yet there is much of that lifestyle 
that one might rightly mourn. That and much more gone. What is coming is not yet clear. An understatement, to be sure. Yet how often do we hear, I believe in religious life, it will continue, but I have not got a clue about what it's going to look like. Now, the good news is, in this middle space, concurrent with the breakdown of so much of what is familiar, there is the inbreaking of something new. And we are not alone in this middle space. Our world is experiencing tremendous transitions, major shifts in worldview, a new cosmology, and numerous possibilities for creativity in the midst of disorientation on so many levels. Nancy goes on to say that in this middle space, women religious are called to bear witness to what we have come to know through the changes we have lived. To bear witness to what we have come to know through the changes we have lived. And we are called to find our prophetic identity in being, seeing, and telling. To find our prophetic identity in being, seeing, and telling. As daughters of wisdom living in this middle space, where do we discover the true meaning of our lives today? To what are we called to witness? What gift do we have to offer to our contemporary world? A question posed by Peter Block, author and consultant, in an interview with Anne Marie Sanders, IHM. In reflecting on these two questions, I have come to realize that our new rule of life, the way of wisdom, offers a privileged path of response by naming our specific mission. To seek, contemplate, and reveal wisdom at the heart of the world, and in so doing, to denounce false wisdoms. Can you hear beneath that text the prophetic identity Nancy speaks of? Being, seeing, telling. Isn't it remarkable? And yet I ask myself, why am I surprised? The rule of life has come from the lived experience of the daughters of wisdom around the world. It was prepared by a committee of sisters from different cultures and different generations. It is firmly rooted in the vision of our founders and it clearly opens us up to the future. The leadership team has chosen to spend a significant amount of time during this gathering with the text of the rule of life, the way of wisdom, because the words therein both express our mission and fashion our mission. And there is a power in naming and in contemplating that naming, a power that by God's grace bears fruit in our being and in our acting. We read in Numbers 6 and 7, whatever our commitment, whatever our commitment. So, full-time ministry, part-time, community service, volunteer service. Whatever the condition of our life, healthy, energetic, recuperating, immobile, declining. Whatever the condition, 
We make the passion of Manfred our own today. I will love God hidden in my neighbor. Each of us, no matter our age or our state of health, is fully part of the congregation's mission. Fully part. Do we believe that? By our very being, we are fully part of the mission of seeking, contemplating, and revealing wisdom, and in so doing, denouncing false wisdoms. Powerful words, if we live that reality. If we allow that reality to fashion our hearts, and to lead to the realization of the innate connection between spirituality and justice. For the next few moments, I will tell you something of what I have come to know over the years of attempting to live this mission and the gift I believe we have to offer to our contemporary world what I have come to know, seeking wisdom. On the journey of faith, no matter who we are, I believe seeking, yearning, desiring is essential. The mystery of God is beyond our comprehension, and we need to remain open to new discoveries. Life is always evolving, and we are always learning. We do not need to have the answers. Exploring the questions together is more important. At times, when I am preparing for a leadership team meeting, I face questions for which I have no answer, not even a clue to the answer. As a team, we pray together, search together, speak and listen back and forth, and then, together, we see the next step to take for that moment. We know the grace of seeking wisdom, contemplating wisdom. Contemplation is a treasure, a long, loving look at the real, brings such richness to life. It enables us to respond rather than merely react to various situations we face, relationships in community, unjust activities and decisions in the church, the workplace, the neighborhood. One time, as I was giving a reflection during a prayer service in the parish, a male member of the prayer team interrupted me actually took over, <laughs> inviting the group to sing. <laughs> I was livid. <laughs> and I prayed my face was not revealing that, though I suspected it was. <laughs> Several days later, and only after I had spent time taking a more loving look at the situation. I was able to calmly approach him, to express what I had felt, and to my amazement, to hear his own insecurity and his total lack of awareness. I know the grace of contemplating wisdom, revealing wisdom, Wisdom permeates and pervades all things. She is constantly at work in the universe, and we have the choice of collaborating with her or not. By the way we relate to those around us, to the structures in society, to all creation, we can actually be active in manifesting her presence in our being, in telling what we see. Recently, as I listened to a directee speak of his experience in ministry, 
I had a deep sense of wisdom working through him. His insights, caring, mentoring skills, and truth-seeking were such a reflection of her, and I had the privilege of telling him that. I know the grace of revealing wisdom. What I believe we have to offer. As daughters of wisdom, we've been seeking, contemplating, and revealing wisdom for decades. And I believe we still have significant gifts to offer our church and society. First of all, our presence. Living the wisdom values in our relationships, wherever we are. Then in our choices, personally and corporately. Particularly those we make in favor of the marginalized and of the sustainability of the planet. And thirdly, our voices, by speaking of these wisdom values, personally and corporately, each time we speak up for the refugee, for trafficked peoples, exploited environments, each time we speak to our legislators and work with others seeking justice, each time we bring our prayer, we bring to our prayer our suffering world. Yes, without a doubt, our gifts are needed and make a difference. No less today than back in the day. And I dare say, perhaps even more. May wisdom, who has brought us to this moment, lead us on in seeking, contemplating, and revealing her presence and her incredible love for our world. I invite you now just to take uh, a moment of silence to be aware of what is stirring within your mind and heart at this time. 